Hello, everyone. Um, as Ben said, I've slipped a disc in my back, so it's not gonna, I'm not going to look the most comfortable I've ever looked, so hopefully it won't distract any of you just with the way I'm not moving much. Um, but it's fine. I set myself the target of at least being here, and um, I thought if Paul McCartney can be on stage for three hours at 80 years old, I should be able to write for 20 minutes at my tender age, which is less than 80. Um, <laughs> we're in Acts chapter 6, which is um, where deacons are first appointed. So first time deacons were appointed is in Acts 6 in the New Testament church, and probably most recently it was this morning for us. So we're continuing something that began 2,000 years ago. So I'm going to unpack this morning some of the... Um, practical outworkings or reasons that, that, um, Acts, uh, that Luke talks in Acts sorry, about elders and deacons and how they function, but how we all function as a church. And um, just to start us off, as we hear uh, the word of God read, Jane's going to read Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked, were being neglected in the daily distributions. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve the tables. Therefore, brothers, pick up from among you certain men of good repute, for the Holy Spirit and the wisdom whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prophet, and Nicod, Nicanor, and Tyron, and Parmenus and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they said before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands hand on them. And the word of God continued to, to increase. And then the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, that's the, the second time that I've asked Jane, sorry, um, to preach. Uh, to read, sorry, um, asked her on, uh, for Good Friday. Uh, some of you would have been here on Good Friday. And both times I've asked Jane if she'd read, straight away she just had a massive smile on her face and said, I'd love to, I'd love to do it. And um, both times as well, I've checked with her in the week. Um, I hope I'm not making you feel awkward, Jane, sorry. Um, but both times I've checked, checked with Jane in the week and said, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? And, you know, both, both times she's texted me back and said, I'm, I'm really nervous, but I really want to do it. And just, you know, I love, I love hearing you speak, Jane. Um, it's just great. great. And actually, um, Gillian, Gillian was um, praying this morning, when we, uh, just before we started. Gillian was praying about all the unsung heroes at, at churches and it's easy to kind of you know get to this passage in Acts and and it talks about the two New Testament offices of elder and deacon and it's 
it, it would be easy to misread it as you know, talking about hierarchy, and, and it's not talking about hierarchy. Um, the thing it's talking about, the payoff is in that last, last verse, chapter 7, uh, sorry, verse 7. So I've been on a lot of medication this week. <laughs> so, the doctor prescribed me Valium and Codeine, um, which was pretty grim. Um, and I stopped taking that a couple of days ago, but it's been, it's been a uh, more challenging week than usual. So Sorry, I know I'm messing up some words. Um, the last verse there, verse 7, that's the payoff of this, of this part of Acts, where it says, And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. It's when the word of God is taught, and spirit-filled Christians are serving God in the way that God has asked individual spirit-filled Christians to serve him, the outworking, the outcome of that is the word of God continues to increase, the number of disciples continues to increase. And the huge last thing there at the end of this chapter, or at the end of this part of the chapter, a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. There were people that were not interested in any way in Jesus and not interested in any way in following him who through the New Testament church structure systems being set up and put in place of elders serving as they should be and deacons serving as they should be and everybody serving as they should be as God called them to do. That's a thing that meant a great many of the priests who would have had to turn away from their livelihoods and their social standing and so on were going, hang on a minute, Jesus is the Messiah, actually. We hadn't seen it and now we have. So putting systems in place for churches isn't a bad thing. <laughs> basically, because it, it's how then we can actually do what God's called us to do, go and make disciples of all nations, preach the word, and see disciples made. So there's, there's unsung heroes, as, as Gillian was praying this morning, there's unsung heroes everywhere. I was thinking as she was saying that this morning. You know, a couple of weeks back, when uh, Monica um, was asking if anyone uh, could help um, with the adults with extra needs in her group. And Monica, is Monica here? She's not here, oh, she's on holiday. Okay. I noticed that when Monica was talking then, she really quickly just deflected everything away from herself and went, now, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I really need someone that does. And I kind of thought then, you know, when I talk on Act 6, I'm gonna correct Monica and say, Monica, you do know what you're doing because you've put in, and I'll put in such a huge, amount of time to Charlie, who's here on the front row again, like you were a couple of weeks ago, Charlie. All good today? Very. Good? Yeah, good, I've good, good. Jesus in my heart. You have got Jesus in your heart. Yeah, I want him in my heart, because uh, I love him. Exactly. That's good. <laughs> so Charlie's in, Charlie's in the fusion group. Charlie's in the fusion group that Monica runs, and Monica really quickly deflected everything away from herself, which, which I know why she did it, but the way that she serves unsung and unseen a lot of the time is just amazing. There's just unsung servant everywhere, which, which is just inc incredible to see. And actually, I was sat next to Charlie a couple of weeks back uh, when Clive was preaching. And I've never seen someone hang on every word of a preach like I watched Charlie do that day. He's not doing it today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, make a note. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. <laughs> and at the end, actually, Charlie said, uh, Charlie turned to me and he said, Where's the man that spoke about God? I want to go and say thank you to him. And he rushed straight off to Clive and said, Thank you. Get you a Bible, Bible, sorry, Bible. Okay. Bible, so to look for one for me. Brilliant. That's cool. That'd be great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> good. So, um, I'm, I'm not even, I haven't even looked at my notes, which I tend not to as I've started this. Um, but this whole chapter, you know, yes, it talks about elders and deacons, but every single person has a vital, individual, unique role and part to play. And it's amazing to see Charlie sitting on the front row and making notes and see what Monica does. and. If you, if you were to look behind the curtains at the back, you'll see the, a work of art 
in cabling that Marky's put together over years so that we can see and hear and all the stuff that we don't ever see or know about. There's people that just surf and surf and surf and surf and surf. It's, it's amazing. So this passage here, uh, Simon, if you can go back up to the first, first verses. Um, it really doesn't mean that elders or deacons are more important than anyone else. No one is of any more or any less value than anyone else. And I've been reading this book recently, um, mainstream, secular book, business book, by an author called Simon Sinek, uh, called Leaders Eat Last. And um, really, the whole book is written as a kind of business structure of how to be a good leader at work and how to build your company and that kind of thing. But the whole book, really, is just Simon Sinek just focusing, uh, probably unknowingly, on what Jesus said in Matthew 20. You know, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And his whole big book is basically, if you want to lead well, serve well. And if you want people to follow you as a leader, serve them. And give yourself to them. And leadership in the New Testament, that's what it is. It's serving people. Um, which is why we appointed deacons. Because there's... Um, Practically speaking, let me give you a couple of examples. So practically speaking, in terms of putting systems in place so that, so that we can make disciples is the whole thing. Um, a few weeks back, Ollie, Ollie said to me, uh, we've been, we, we have elders meetings on Monday nights. And this, this verse here can look a little bit, it can come across a bit arrogant, I think, where it says, the twelfth summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it's not right that we should give up preaching the word to serve tables. And it can, it can just look a bit like, ow, hang on a minute, you're not more, surely you're not more important than me. And it can look like that. And a couple of weeks back, I'd been, I had a morning off on a Monday, which I don't usually have, and I'd just been reading Deuteronomy, and I felt God speaking to me um, and to us through Deuteronomy. So I just put a little video message into the elders' WhatsApp group and said, hey, I've been reading the Bible I think God's speaking to us through Deuteronomy, and this is what I think. And, and then that was it, you know, it's a two-minute uh, video message. And I saw Ollie in the evening on that Monday, and he said, you know what, I realized you were at home doing what an elder should do, and I was, he said, I was here doing what a deacon should do. I spent my day doing what the diaconate role should be. So he was, and it, nothing that I'd done, you know, it wasn't me going, hey, what a great elder. It was just I'd had some time and I read, read the Bible and said, I think God's speaking to us as a church. And Ollie went, hang on a minute, I think I need to stop being a deacon and start filling my time doing elder jobs. So it's, it, if Ollie is then, for example, not doing his elder job that day, and I'm not picking on Ollie, obviously. I'm not picking away. Um, but, you know, if, if Ollie practically isn't doing the job that he should be doing that day, the role that God's asked him to fulfill that day, well, then it means also there's a deacon not able to fulfill their role because Ollie's doing that role, and it knocks down and knocks down, and suddenly we're all slightly out of place, not quite doing the things that God's asked us to do. And it's an easy fix to go, well, elders need to be elders, and deacons need to be deacons, and everybody needs to do the thing that God's called them to do, and that's how the Word of God is preached and disciples are made, and the priests come to follow Jesus because they say, hang on a minute, Jesus is the Messiah, isn't he? And it's, it's not a bad thing to be practical and put systems in place and then make sure they work, basically follow them through. So I just want to give you an example as well. In fact, um, Simon, can you put up Ephesians 5, please? Because the way, we, the way you've heard Ollie talk before is that we view elders as being servant leaders and deacons as being leading servants and kind of, you know, dividing the, the roles that God's asked them to do. So Ephesians 5, and this is a well-known verse to, to many of us, be, be filled with the Spirit, addressing each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another our reverence for Christ. Let me give you a, an example. Um, and I think, for me, one of the huge 
I guess that last uh, verse there, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, possibly if there's one verse I've almost burned into my brain this year particularly, it's been that one, and making sure that that's always working and that's always in place for me. Um, as an example, and this is kind of God's, I think God's sense of humour and the way God teaches us to be humble and teaches us to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So, and I, I checked, where is Rich? Rich is over there. Um, I checked with Rich and it was all right for me to chat about this and he said, yes, it would be fine. Um, in fact, his exact phrase was, if you, think it, if you think it will help, that's fine or something like that. Uh, so, so Rich... Rich is the brand new, just appointed worship deacon, deacon of rock for King's Church. Um, so, before Rich and Lucy moved down from London, some of you will remember that I was the voluntary worship pastor here. And then Rich and Lucy moved down, and Rich became the paid worship pastor, and I stopped doing it, and I became the volunteer um, team member in, in Rich's team that, team that Rich led three years ago, probably. Um, and then about a year ago, I, I became employed here one day a week, um, officially as creative team leader, which then put me overseeing Rich and the team that he oversees, which I was, or am still part of as well. So I'm in Rich's team that he leads, and my job is to oversee Rich and the team that he leads. <laughs> part of which I'm a member of, and so on. And then a few months ago, obviously, I became an elder, and today Rich was appointed as deacon, and it's possible that that kind of thing may not work. I'm just going to suggest, <laughs> as, as an example, but possibly. Um, and I, so why does it work? And it really does. It really does. And it's fine for me to submit entirely to Rich as a member of his team that he's got authority to lead and he's been appointed, laid hands on, and before God, Rich leads the worship team. It's absolutely fine for me to be in total submission to Rich and anyone else who took over from Rich, whether it's Caleb or Sally or Mandy or whoever, anyone that took over that team from Rich, absolutely fine for me to submit into that team. And then it's absolutely fine, or it should be fine, for then Rich to submit to me as the person that leads the creative team, which his team is part of, and then for me to be an elder and him to, to be a deacon and so on. And the reason it works, I'll suggest, and, and Rich will come up and do a song in a few minutes' time and hopefully not disagree, but... Um, <laughs> In all seriousness, the reason it works is because, well, Rich is my friend, and he's my brother in Christ, and we're together on the mission of making disciples for Jesus, and yeah, possibly it could have been a tricky time. And actually, in all seriousness, we had one lunch that was tricky, didn't we, Rich? He's not listening to me. <laughs> Thank you. We had one lunch that was tricky where we were kind of piecing together our lives. <laughs> like, ah, this is going to be interesting. Um, but absolutely, I am 100% behind Rich and in full submission to him as part of his team that he leads. And I know that he's happy to submit to me in the role that I've been placed to oversee that team and so on. And it's in that mutual submission, I'd suggest that all of this kind of stuff works. That when we're, you know, for example, appointing deacons today, yes, the deacons are appointed to lead their teams and have authority to lead their teams and the elders oversee the church and oversee the deacons that lead the teams. And deacons that are here today, you know that you've been appointed because you've been chosen by God through the Holy Spirit for this season to lead and be deacons overseeing your areas. And you're already doing that. Um, but deacons, I just want to say to all of you, you know, love your teams. 
Lucy brought the word, you know, or backing up, you know, what Dom had said about love. Deacons, if you love your teams, they will want to submit to you. And, you know, whenever submission is talked about in the New Testament, you know, it's not, submission should never be the result of domination. You're beaten into submission, so you have to submit. It should never be that. And actually, if ever, if ever I got the elder card out of my back pocket and went, Rich, elder beats deacon, then I've completely and utterly abused the office that I've been asked to stand in, basically. And it should never, ever, and by the grace of God, won't ever happen. Um, But mutual submission can and does and should. So deacons, love your teams and make it easy for them to submit to you. Because if it's easy to submit to you, they'll be able to do it joyfully. You know, when the New Testament talks about submission, it's always on the part of the person submitting that does the submitting. And that kind of might sound obvious, but it's always the person that should submit, which the Bible says, submit yourself. You, submit. So the people that you're submitting to, they need to make it easy for you to submit to them. And they they need to make it a joy for you to submit to them. And they need to make it fun to be part of this church, submitting to them. And if we get that right, then there's a whole world out there to make disciples of and teach about the truth and teach the truth too. Um, And actually, I just want to say as well, for anyone that isn't part of a deacon's team, um, and many people are, but each week in the past month or so, we've kind of banged the drum of we need more volunteers, we need more volunteers, but it's true, basically. So on Tuesdays in the meetings that I'm in on a Tuesday here, often when we have kind of debriefs of you know, what worked, what didn't, and what departments are going well and what ones aren't going so well, pretty much without fail, anything that isn't working so well, the answer is, well, what's up then? And the answer is, there's not enough people. We just need people to serve in. So can I lovingly challenge all of us, if, if you aren't serving and are able to, or if you are serving and are able to serve more, then please do, because right across the board, we need more people serving. We really do. Um, but don't be guilted into it by me <laughs> at all. Don't make it a guilt trip. Um, make it something that's a joy for you. Make it something that you can get involved in a team and you're joyfully submitting to the person that leads that team and they'll be joyfully overseeing you and helping you to flourish with the whole point being, as we started with after Jane read, the word of God continues to increase, the number of the disciples multiplies greatly, and a great many priests became obedient to the faith. If we get this stuff right in terms of the system, then the church should flourish. That's what happens. That's what the New Testament church did. Um, so if we're all getting up every morning and going, you know what, today I'm going to love the Lord God, Lord my God, with all my heart, my soul, my strength, and my spirit, and I'm going to serve the people around me and love my neighbor. Well, if that's the thing that we all get out of bed and do all day, that would be a good life lived by the time we get to the end of it. Rich, do you want to grab your team and come back? I know I've been a little bit, like, like my brain's all over the place, actually, from medication and stuff, but um, I just want to finish with this quote that I read this week from D.L. Moody. And really, the whole thing, the whole thing is summed up, as Lucy said earlier, in love. You know, let's love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let's love each other. Let's serve each other. Let's submit joyfully and freely and willingly to one another. Let's build each other up. Let's celebrate the way we're serving. Let's thank each other for the way that we're serving. And let me just read this quote from D.L. Moody, 19th century preacher. He said this. If we are co-workers with God, there's one thing we must possess, and that is love. One may be a very successful lawyer and have no love for their clients and yet get on very well. One may be a very successful physician and have no love for their patients and yet be a very good physician. 
But no one can be a worker with God without love. We cannot work for God without love. It's only there. Sorry. It's o- it is the only tree that can produce fruit on this sin-cursed earth. I believe God cannot use many of his servants because they are full of irritability and impatience. If they have not love, they cannot work for God. The work of the Holy Ghost is to impart love. And if we do that, we're doing what God's asked us to do. So, simple. Well done, oh, thanks, Rick.